Hello everybody, what's happening, what's happening? My name's Neil, welcome along to Midlife Motors. And we're back up by the wind farm today, which means we're reviewing another EV, another electric car. An Audi Q4 this time, an e-tron. This is an S-Line edition, spec, whatever you want to call it. We'll have a quick look round the outside, we'll have a quick look round the inside, we'll take it for a drive, and we'll get the all important feedback from the owner, because this car, a year old, done 10,000 miles, so it's been put to the test. Let's find out what it's all about. Quick words around the outside because it's a handsome looking thing, this car, in a colour called Violet, which was uh, which was an optional extra, and I think you can see it really pops in the sun here, so well worth it on a day like today. The wheels as well, the sort of two-tone look, they were added to the car as well, but otherwise it comes the way it looks with a tinted glass. Nice shape, I think it's a bit Bentayga-esque at the back, or am I just being a bit mad there? Good looking motor, goes down the well road, a little bit smaller than the Hyundai this one, so a bit easier to place, not so um, not so uh, tricky to park if you like, not quite such an intimidating car, but still big enough for a family of five. Quick look at the inside, it is very Audi-esque, so we've got the fantastic seats that we've been talking about, we've got two screens, one in front of the steering wheel there, obviously all your drive information, and then your apps, your infotainment is in uh, just off to the left of you there. Very easy to use, we saw when we tried the Q3, very easy to interface, great system you have to give Audi a thumbs up for this this works really well lots of space in the front there loads of space in the back I mean look between the seats look how much you've got there and that's our seats you know where we haven't moved them forward in any way shape or form and plenty of headroom in this car I've noticed too again very comfy in the back here bombing round to the back for a quick look in the boot Buckets of space, the dog's quite happy at home in there. Ken's joined us again. He's become my go-to person for everything EV advice because despite being a bit of a petrol head, you've had Lotuses, you've had Golf Rs, yep. you've even had an Alfa Romeo. I have had an Alfa Romeo, I loved it. It doesn't have an ICE engine car. Family of five and a dog with all the stuff that comes with it and run. you run two electric cars. I mean, is this a financial reason? Are you trying to save the planet? Um, I'm not trying to save the planet. This is purely financial reason. Um, running two electric cars just with the, the tax breaks that you get in the UK um, it's just it's a financial financially sound way to get two yeah, yeah. new cars on the driveway to be honest and that those uh, those tax breaks continue for for a little while yeah it's not till 2025 I think you have to pay road tax on an electric car is that right yeah it's not just that it's the, it's the saving on the income tax that's what the real cost is in, in saving the uh, the financial benefits of, of picking up one of these electric cars You might remember, hopefully the banner will pop out. We reviewed his uh, Hyundai, the I Ionic 5. Yep. Still going strong, that car? Yeah, but it's with us for another four, four or five months. I've still got left, but yeah, no major issues. A few gripes, but no major issues. Right, which is good. This car, a bit newer. I see it's done 10,000 miles now. First thing I notice is this much quieter. This is a much quieter car than the Hyundai, but it feels a little bit firmer. Is that is that true? Yeah, the this the Audi um, this Q4 is it's got a firmer suspension. Something actually I prefer. I think it feels a little bit more tied down. This is only a rear wheel drive car as well, so that gives you quite rear wheel a, drive. That's good. Rear wheel drive is better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it gives you quite a nice um, experience, especially when you just get on that throttle in the corner, nice and early. You do tend to find the the nose will will tuck in just a touch. But like any family car, you know, if you push too hard, it's just going to wash out into understeer. We're averaging 3.3 miles per kilowatt, so it's got... A it's little just, bit better than the yeah, Hyundai. Yeah, so then. this is about te at least 10% better than the Hyundai, um, although it is four-wheel drive car, so I guess there's probably more losses involved with that. If you marry it to the 80 kilowatt hour battery, I think it's 82 kilowatt you get in yep. the Audis, um, you know, multiply that by 3.3 and you can see you've got a fairly comfortable 250 miles range. I think on a perfect summer's day, I think you could get about 270 out of the Q4 pretty easily. Um, and it's got a claim range of just over 300 for the, the, the single um, 
So, so it's a bit better range, and yeah. you're a bit better with range. Not quite as pokey though as the hindsight, no, is no, it? No. So if you know, you notice that that Hyundai got if, up and if, went. Yeah, if you're stepping out of a Tesla. Uh, and you think you want a you want a change from a Tesla to another family electric vehicle, and you get into the Q4. There's many things I would, I think I would prefer about the Q4, but the acceleration is not going to be one of them. It's the equivalent of 200 horsepower. Right. It's, okay. It's got that initial torque surge, but there's not much after that, to be honest. It's um, it's fine for keeping up on the motorway and pulling out and overtaking, but it's by no means is this a fast car. If you're able to charge at home, um, yeah. then there are massive financial benefits because it's really cheap in the UK, at least at the moment, to charge um, overnight, uh, and it effectively makes it yeah, pretty I, much I think, a no-brainer of a decision. Did I see you getting like a, about 100 miles? Is sort of three or four quid yeah, overnight. That, that's, that sounds about which is, right. Which so is think, a big, which is a big saving. Yeah, over, so yeah. I think two, two pounds, two pounds eighty. So under three pounds gets you about 60 to 70 miles. I would say roughly. You know, it depends yeah. when this is filmed or when you're watching. Yeah. I quite like this. Like I haven't got an electric car. They, I don't know if they appeal to me yet. I don't. I quite like this because it looks like an car. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Nothing, it just happens to have an electric correct, motor. Yeah. It, it's exactly right. When you get into the Hyundai, you've got this almost the, the exterior looks, and then this huge. You get hit with a huge sense of space when you get into the car. With the Audi, I find it's a lot more cosseting, but much more conventional. You have the screens yeah. which wrap around, around you. you. Yeah, it, yeah. It's all very yeah. familiar. So for someone that doesn't want uh, a car that screams electric car, um, wants to be in a familiar environment, then I think this is probably ideal for them. Yeah. We're in the S line, which is the not the base model. It's the the one up from the base model. Yep. So you get a, a couple of nice things. You get slightly larger wheels. You get the S line seats. Um, you get, which are excellent. Yeah. Like the Q3, these are superb. Yeah, these are great seats. I, I've driven this car, you know, many many thousands of miles. The seats are fantastic in this. I do like them. Well, there we go. And is there anything? I know uh, this is predominantly your wife's car than yours, but is there, are there any niggles? Is there anything that people need to know that are, is a bit of a pain in the bum with this? Um, the, the lane departure assist, which you have to switch off every time you drive the car, if you're like me, um, it will drive you absolutely nuts. Right. And it's, it's three presses of a button, which you have to do while you're driving, but you also have to scroll through a menu. <laughs> you have to take your eyes off the road to do this. I wish they had a quick fire button to just, you know, one button switches it off. That's pretty annoying. Okay, my turn behind the, w the wheel now. So we'll see what it's like from a dig. Away we go. Got comfy in the car straight away. Controls all really easy to get to, into the right position. All very adjustable, just perfect. Sitting here, great view. Yeah, just a good place to be in the car. You were mentioning, although the ID4, that was a car you looked at, and you've heard a few disasters with the infotainment system, you've not had that here, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I think Volkswagen had some problems with crashing of their infotainment system and some other um, electrical gremlins. Just to be clear, we've had none of that in the Audi. It has been absolutely seamless throughout. So a thumbs up for Audi there. One thing I've noticed driving this car is it, that, again, I keep going back to it, it does feel more like a car, this one. You've not got, remember last time we had the paddles to add and subtract braking? Don't have any of that this time. We're just driving it like an automatic. There is one thing you can do in drive mode. If you pull it drive mode twice, then it adds the braking, doesn't it? There we go, the car's coming to a stop for us now. So you've got an eye pedal, but, you can switch it off if you don't, you know, if it's taking you a while to get used to it. I think that's a good thing. I think I would drive it without the pedal until I got used to it. Yeah, I found that the more I drive electric cars, the more the eye pedal is a good thing. And this obviously only has one setting for the regenerative braking. It doesn't have multiple settings. So that's your one setting and that's it. I think if I was to get a weekend car, there's no doubt it would be um, a petrol car. Yeah. Something, something, I don't know, yeah. lightweight. <laughs> so after driving these heavy SUVs, yeah, yeah lightweight. lightweight. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't need an awful lot of power, but something with some feel. Do, do you know what? There's no point trying to get 
a powerful, fast ice car because these electric cars just 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 kill them. They just kill them for acceleration. They oh, just, they, even they, even yeah. this, it's just it's initial get up and go. It's it's pointless. You you've got to drive. I, I, I'm not chasing a powerful petrol car anymore. No. If I you want to go fast in a straight line, you buy an electric car. Oh, don't for you? sure, for sure. For for the uh, the bragging rights under acceleration, electric cars have got ice cars licked at the moment. A hundred percent, and that's coming from me, which I never thought, but it's true. And we we're not in particularly fast electric cars. We're just in fast cars. Correct. But if we went to a fast electric car, it'd be bonkers. Yeah, oh yeah, the uh, Teslas are absolutely ridiculous. Oh, better go, the phone's ringing. Someone's on the phone. GoPro, stop recording. The second review on the channel of an electric car, an EV, and I'd have to say I prefer this one. If I was going to start with an electric vehicle, I think something like this would be more my cup of tea. A bit too big for me, I'd probably look at something maybe a bit more carish, but if you need the space, if you need like the upright high driving position, then this is definitely the car to go. And after a year, if you can pick one up and save yourself some money, this is like driving a brand new car. Thanks very much for watching this one. Oh, please give us a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe because there's loads more coming. See you again soon. Goodbye.